ça a creusé la cuirasse. Donc, j'en ai central. I'd like to begin with a quotation by George Saunders. I interviewed George about a year ago in Australia, in Sydney, and this is what he had to say, and I'd like your reaction to that. George Saunders said, in my life, I've seen art pushed off to the side, and I think we're starting to see the results of that in our public life, because art has always been the way of teaching people to smell bullshit. I think, uh, and I didn't come up with this idea, but I think when you lose art and culture in a society, you lose the society itself. And when a society becomes more coarse, when museums and galleries close, when there's less opportunity to hear any kind of music, less opportunities to dance, to paint, to express themselves. What you get in that vacuum is ignorance, uh, bigotry, and brutality. And so the bulwark against all of that, which any human can drop to, uh, we're capable of many things, awfulness and greatness. It's culture and art and the protection of it that keeps uh, any country and any society going forward. And so when art gets pushed to the side, what comes in its place, you don't want any part of. If you're a considerate person, if you're not homophobic or misogynist or racist, you will not like what comes in its place. And that's why if I had my way, if I was the president boss, there'd be not nearly as much money for the military, but there'd be a whole lot of money for galleries and museums, art, 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 culture, 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 because that humanizes us. It makes it uh, very easy to get through a life with other turned on people who want to go experience and try different things. And that's why when the art gets pushed to the side, you risk losing everything. You, lose, you, you risk losing everything and you risk losing discernment and particular taste. Yeah. I mean, I was raised in two households, uh, five days a week with my mother, two days a week with my father. To the left of my mother was like Joan Baez in a wall. To the right of my father is a wall. That's it. And so I'd spend 48 hours of fear with my father who did not go to museums, did not listen to music. It was all gay to him. My mother turned me on to Stravinsky, Bartok, Beethoven, Mary McCabe, Barbara Streisand, show tunes, Coltrane, Miles, Guthrie, Dylan, etc., etc. I come from Washington, D.C. She's dragging me by the ear to every gallery, every museum. So five days a week of culture, two days a week of the vacuum. So I knew both worlds very well growing up. A father who told me racist things and a mother who would disarm that bomb when I came home with questions about what he said to me. So I understood that culture and art was the way forward at a very early age, and that's why I'm one of those really intense proponents of keeping it, because I, like I said before, I know exactly what we have to lose. And the, the culture we find ourselves in now, where our tastes are dictated by machines, I, I wonder if you have any thoughts about that, or rather, I should say, how can you keep those thoughts to about seven minutes? Yeah, it, it's it's one of the it's one of the main reasons that I'm here tonight because I'm a big supporter of Dub Lab because to me, Dub Lab does everything right. It's it's free radio in that the the programmers, DJs, whatever you'd like to call them, are really allowed to do their thing. The, one of the and I, I'm almost sixty. And so maybe some of my ideas are antiquated. I was with a friend and I was bugging her son, 
where do you get your music? What are you listening to? I'm on this kid like a cheap suit. I go, where's your music source? He pulls up his phone. I said, okay, what are you listening to? He said, well, what the streaming service, the algorithm. And so what if you are listening to some streaming service and you listen to Fugazi as a band as an example? The computer gets to work. A machine gets to work analyzing beats, whatever else, and it lines you up with five more bands to listen to. I guarantee you the algorithm will never get you from Fugazi to Sun Ra. It will never get you from Fugazi to uh, Bartok. But a human curator with a good radio show will because it's all interesting to that presenter. And that's how you can go from Fugazi to Laurie Anderson, which makes total sense to me. But it wouldn't to a computer. And that's what, one of the reasons I love Dub Lab because it's humans who are curating music. You need people like... Uh, Joel Cairo and Casper Gutman, my uh, references are old, that's the Maltese Falcon. Two maniacs in search of a gold and jewel-encrusted bird, and they're going to find it. People like me and some of you, every record store, every stone, turn it over, see if there's a record underneath the stone. And I do that in up to 20 countries a year. I'm always in record stores buying kiosks and CDRs at kiosks and wherever I am, because I bring that to my little show on KCRW. And so I'm your curator. I'm going out. I'm bringing it back. I'm not an algorithm. It's me, your pal, who wants you to listen to good things. And so Dub Lab brings human goodness to the listening experience. And in this day and age, you have a ton of options, but not a lot of choice. <laughs> I wanna touch the sky 
you once said that um, in order to know you, one of the best ways to know you is to look at your record collection. Yeah, and, it's, and it's, I'm, it's any collector's id right. is the record collection. And there's, there's a wonderful line by Umberto Eco where he says that the contents of someone's bookcase are part of their history. Like Absolutely. An, like an ancestral portrait. Yeah. And I'm wondering how that might apply both to you and to the work that an organization like DubLab does. Well, the, the, one of the upsides of this modern age is shows can be archived and they can live on a hard drive and then they can live on your phone where you can call up shows from any year. And as DubLab goes forward and acquires more content, which is a word I use very carefully, uh, what about five years from now? They'll have hundreds and hundreds of more hours of really cool stuff that you can access from your laptop, your phone, your tablet, or whatever. And so the biggest game change these days is, is the fact that the internet can hold almost limitless amounts of information, which is a downside if it's misinformation, but it's a good thing if it's something like what DubLab is doing, which is hundreds of hours of music. On an analog le level, you can look at my bookshelves, which are actually go up to the ceiling, uh, I, I actually climb up them and put a book in my teeth and climb back down. So I, I'm, I like the adventure of nearly falling to my death. I don't want to use the ladder. And so um, you can see my Rambo phase, and you can see, oh, he's into the Russians. It's, it's all there. And then uh, Bush, all, all the different presidents. I was reading about all the awful things they got into. And so uh, you can see the history of my interests in my books, which I've managed to keep almost all of dragging them from hovel to hovel before I bought a home. There is a, a line that I've seen you repeat many times uh, from Sun Ra, and I really want you to unpack it. it, it I hope it's the one I'm thinking of. I think it is, but you may be thinking of another one, then you'll unpack two lines. <laughs> um, this line is, Sun Ra, Sun Ra said, be careful, the music is listening. Yeah. And I, I think it's, I, I don't know what it means, but I think it's phenomenal. It, for me, I, Sun Ra served the music, and then he departed and went back to Saturn. He, but he graced us with his presence for a while, and, and we're lucky. I think once any musician, well, when some musicians think they can actually play music, it's time for you to quit. When you think you can take the dragon for a walk, leave. Uh, if you're no longer being torn to bits by music, obsessed by music, losing your friends because you spend too much time with your bandmates, time to leave. And so uh, music basically, I destroyed my body playing what I, how I thought it should be played, like within an inch of my life physically. And finally, my body and my mind had had enough, and I never went back to music again. I do the odd fundraiser. I just sang a Black Flag song with Cindy Lauper, and it was so cool being a, a person from the 1980s and the 1880s to be standing on stage looking at this woman with a mohawk going, doing a black flag song. I'm like, wow, I never would have thought that when I bought her first record, which I did do. And, but by and large, uh, to me, the music is listening. And so when music stops playing you, leave or just turn into some kind of greatest hits act, and people can go and clap. So the music is listening, because the music is pure. The only thing that gets in the way of music is people. Like absinthe, the only thing that pollutes absinthe is water. It clouds absinthe. And as far as pure musicians, I was listening to John Coltrane last night, because McCoy Tyner, the piano player yeah. in the classic quartet, passed away. Yeah. And so that's one of those people who never got in the way of music. And sadly, an illness took Mr. Coltrane. But there's not one false note the guy ever blew. And there's no fake record that Sun Ra ever made because he knew the music was listening. And if more musicians, actors, writers would adhere to that, they might have shorter careers, but we'd have less chaff and more wheat. So <laughs> that's where that quote takes me. Difference between growing up in a culture where you have records and liner notes and the culture in which we are now where this kid shows you his phone. Yeah. Well, there, I, I, always, I, I do feel like a dinosaur in some ways, loving these records and 
they they inspire a kind of tactile inebriation i feel and you know you you look at an album my favorite jazz album probably the best jazz album ever i'm not prone to emphasis but um, ben webster did a, a an album called atmosphere for lovers and thieves and i have never um uh, never stopped reading those liner notes where Ben Webster meets Fats Waller and says, hey, Fats, have you been drinking? And Fats says, no more than usual. Yeah. And you, 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 you read those notes while listening to the music, and you have that record, and you are close to the record, and you have to, as they do here, turn it around. What changes when the mode of distribution changes? I think music has become very devalued because you can just get it for free off your laptop. You can hear any album you want pretty much for free. And I don't mind if you're a young, inquiring mind. Uh, I feel bad for artists who are starving while they're making their music because someone won't pay. But I think there's really something great from you know, taking the bus and going to the record store, as I used to, and getting the record and trying not to scratch it up so you could play it over and over again so we could keep rescuing you over and over again. And I'm one of those vinyl flipping, analog, vinyl loving people. And I love those nights where I sit alone and listen to seven inches. Sit up, you know, sit down, get up, sit down, get up, sit down, get up. But what I do is I, I'll do a set of push-ups between the A side and the B side to stay in shape. So by the end of a seven inch lift listening session, I'm destroyed. But the music was good and the sweat is. And so I like the fact that you do have to flip the thing over and that you do have to take care of it, that a record is expensive. And it's a ritual. And it's, I love the ritual aspect and the ceremonial aspect of I only play this record at this time of the year, I do all that, I have many rules. But just the physicality. Well, 78 Bowie, that's autumn. No Joy Division after February until <laughs> October. You can't do summertime and unknown pleasures. I can't do it. You go right ahead, I cannot. But I, I love the sheer physicality and the fact that records are delicate, and you have to love it. And, the, and they scratch, and you know when that scratch will come. Yes. And there's some pleasure in that moment because the scratch is part of the history of your listening. And as they say, you get into records for the expense and inconvenience, because eventually you will move. <laughs> And so I'm into all of that. I love the pain in the neck. I, I, I didn't mind when CDs came in and there was that portability aspect, but they don't have any love in them. And there's no music on a CD, it's just information. And so we have, we have about 25 seconds, Paul. So you're the great conversationalist. You're going to gently land the B-side. I just have to say, Henry, it's a much too short pleasure. Well, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. And long live Dub Lab. Please keep supporting yeah. Dub Lab. Support Dub Lab.
That's why I say.